Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We're talking about React and giving kind of a brief introduction to it so that we can use it for our fourth version of the playlist. We had gotten to the point where we were talking about setting state, uh, but we have code here that doesn't do anything yet because we aren't actively, uh, we aren't doing anything that can change this. So we have this click handler, which as the name implies, I'm intending to make it so that when we click on this, something happens. Uh, we need to make it so this actually gets called. So going back over to the documentation for React, you can find this under handling events here. I'm actually going to wind up going a little out of order. So in HTML, you have things that are specified with, for example, on click. In React, the names are slightly different. Uh, we capitalize, it uses proper camel case. And instead of giving a string for the JavaScript that you want, you give a, the function that you want to use. Now, when this is JSX, it needs to be inside of curly braces. When we do this inside of a non JSX version, uh, this would just be something that we would put inside of the properties. That's one of the things I didn't mention about properties. Turns out that properties have one additional behavior that if you use a property that has a name that HTML understands, so for example, ID, uh, that will actually be put into the HTML. So if I use properties that have no names for the HTML element, they will actually pass along and put into the HTML element. There are some uh, exceptions to this. For example, class is a nice known name, but it also happens to be a keyword in JavaScript, which allowed us to do this. And so in React, we have to say class name equals. In this case, I want it so that the on click is going to be handled, oh, and I like to put equals there, but of course this is a JavaScript object, so this should be a colon. This goes to the click handler. Um, actually, I'm going to change that. Uh, the binding, uh, we'll, we'll go with this as is for now. It's F5. We could put in some code that would. So click handler is not defined. Indeed, that would be a this dot click handler. Um, I actually want feel, well, sure. This dot click handler. Cannot read set state of undefined. Okay, now that's an interesting challenge here. So the set state was being called on this here. Well, that implies this is undefined. And the challenge is that if you, the way that JavaScript handles this, this is, it's one of the errors kind of in JavaScript going back to the very beginning of it, uh, is somewhat, you know, it winds up being somewhat problematic. Uh, there are two ways of dealing with this. One is to use the rocket notation. Goes to this dot click handler of E. Um, because rockets bind this in a static way. So whatever value you have uh, when it is created, that is the value that it will have later on. Um, the alternative is to use the bind operation and specify what this would be. Personally, I like the rocket notation. Part of that might be the fact that I'm coming from a Scala background, and so it, it feels more natural to me. If you want to use bind, you can, but now you can see how this works. Uh, when I click on it, our count goes up the way that we would expect, given the code that we had written. So once again, I am putting a handler on here, on click, capitalized, unlike the HTML, 
and it gives a function, and I either need to use a rocket or I have to use a bind, that calls the click handler, and in there I set the state. Now when the state gets set, that kind of reconstructs the component, not all the way be from the beginning with the constructor, and there are times where I kind of need to know what's going on with this, and that is one of the other topics that I kind of skipped over related to state. So there are these, these life cycle methods. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail on them, but there are a number of methods that can be defined specially. I'm sure if I scroll down here a bit, we'll get to something that has several of these methods. Component did mount, component will mount. Uh, there are also methods for the component being updated uh, and both before and after the state is updated. So I leave it to the interested viewer to go through and go look at all of these lifecycle methods that are in here. Um, we will need some of them for our task list later, potentially. So I introduced you to them. We don't need it for our example here. But if I needed to, to do something when the component was being updated, when the state had been changed, I would go to lifecycle methods to, to make that happen. Okay, um, there's one other thing that I really feel needs to be handled here and or dealt with here, and that is the handling of forms. Now, I don't have a form in this particular situation, so how about we just make a simple form Oh my gosh, extends React component. And as I said before, all React components need to have a render method that returns a React element. And I want this to be a text field. So it's going to be of type input. The properties needs to include a type that is equal to text. So remember I mentioned that the if a property has uh, and JavaScript, um, if a if we pass in a property whose key is something that is known to be part of the HTML, it will automatically put that in the HTML. And then as far as children go, actually this is a rest so I can inevitably leave it blank. Um, simple form, I'm going to get rid of our stateless hello. Actually, why do that? Why not just make a whole nother one, right? Um, so... just to make this readable. Okay, a CE of a simple form. I did not currently pass any properties to this, uh, nor do I have any children for this. Okay, let's See if that's happy, see if I get, I got a text field. Okay, and I can type in it, but it turns out that's a challenge for React. And and just typing in it that way is generally not the, the recommended way to handle that because that is a dynamic part of the HTML and referring to its value is not the recommended way to do things in React. If I wanna be able to type into this and utilize that value, I need to actually make that value part of the state. So we're going to make a constructor and our constructor takes the props and it calls super on those props. And let's go ahead and say this dot state is equal to our text, now let's call it text input, how's that? 
starts off as the empty string. And so our type here will be set not to some, all right, nope, sorry, control Z. The uh, value of this, which we didn't specify before, we could have made it an empty string to start off, but we want it to be the state. So this.state.text input will be the value of our input field. Okay. And if we come over and we refresh. Uh, failed prop type, you provided value on a form field without an on-change handler. Okay, that's that's a reasonable warning. So, because it's telling us what we need to do next. In order to handle this, I need to make a handler, much like my click handler uh, for my on click, that will be activated every time there is a change. So if there is a change, I want to capture that event and pass it on to a change handler. And let's go ahead and let's define our change handler that takes E. And based upon the type of uh, key that they hit, we need to do different things. So when they uh, when they type in a key, we need to add that onto the state that we are working with. Um, or just take the value that is currently in there and make that part of the state. So for example, this dot set state and our state has a text input and we want that to be equal to, so this was an event that had a target to it, and we want the value of that target, which will be our text input there. And so this is going to then cycle back around, and because we've changed the state, it will force it to re-render. This will invoke those other lifecycle methods that we mentioned uh, just a minute ago, But that way, when we want to do something with this, now I'm just passing that through. I don't have anything that will that handles, for example, hitting enter on it or anything like that. But then we can use the state's text input anywhere inside of this component in order to make other changes happen. Okay, so that gives you kind of a brief overview of React. I think it's enough that we can now start working on what we need in order to make a task list that actually uses React for us. And we'll come back in the next video and we'll start working on that.